Hello everybody and welcome to the most audacious cooking show on the internet, Cozy Bears Cooking. It's season three of Cozy Bears Cooking, which means that for 12 weeks, I'm coming to you live with 12 fantastically unique, never before seen dishes for your eyeballs and ear holes to enjoy and my lips to savor. If you're not currently doing so already, you can catch the show live every Sunday at 4 p.m. EST, as well as give back to the channel by following, subscribing, or even tossing a donation or two my way. Doing so will earn you my eternal gratitude and a few wheel spins from my prize wheel of causality right over here. Don't worry, I fixed the little thingamashlong over here so it won't fall out as much. I actually didn't fix it that it's not something I did at all. I'm just hoping that it won't break like last time. And I just remembered just now as I was motioning over to my prize wheel of causality that I actually hadn't fixed that part. Uh, today, we are gonna be making a very unique dish to say the least. As you all know, here on Cosmere's Cooking, uh, I'm quite fond of many a pizza. Uh, of course, Cosmere's Cooking season three, I was gonna come back with even more pizzas with a vengeance, but I figured that this time around, uh, it would be worthwhile to combine my love of pizzas with uh, some pop culture-y stuff. And you know what's in pop culture? Kind of funny, kind of funny, of course, uh, a YouTube channel that I love, a YouTube channel that has allowed me to meet all manner of cool ass friends on the internet. Uh, the kind of funny crew are great people. However, uh, every now and then on their content, snakes come from, seemingly nowhere and just bite them all over the face and incapacitate them. Sometimes they even cut their power lines and render them without internet. It is a whole shebang. And so I figured today uh, I would pay tribute to the greatest nemesis uh, that the Kind of Funny crew faces on a daily and weekly basis and combine that with my love of pizzas to make what I am calling snake bite pizzas. Just a quick heads up right here, right off the bat. No, there is no snake in these pizzas. You'll understand exactly what these pizzas actually are once I begin assembling them. Um, let me oh, go ahead and grab my phone here real quick. Unlike last time, uh, where I was relying on a cookbook to assemble the recipes I'm making today, uh, today I'm largely gonna be relying on my phone. So of course, I need my phone at hand. Uh, first things first, uh, we're gonna start off by making some spinach dough uh, for our pizza. Uh, this recipe comes courtesy of a website called thecheerfulkitchen.com. Seems like a nice cheerful place. Uh, to make our spinach dough pizza, uh, we are gonna need six cups of all-purpose flour. I was trying to figure out how many <laughs> fingers that was as I was putting my hands up. Uh, we are gonna need one teaspoon of salt. Uh, which I have right here. Uh, we are going to need two teaspoons of active dry yeast. I actually decided this time around that I would use uh, quick rising instant yeast. It's functionally like, it'll provide the exact same uh, effect, except this stuff we won't need to bloom in water. We can just mix it directly into our flour. Uh, we are gonna need three cups of packed fresh spinach. Might as well get that stuff out of the fridge right now. This bag of spinach that I have right here, when I pack it down, should equate to about three or so cups. Whoops. Thankfully it's in a bag, so. Mm. Won't be a big deal. Look at this stuff, look at how green it is. Real nice looking. We're gonna have to do a lot of stuff to that to get it uh, ready for our recipe, but certainly we're not lacking in time. Uh, and finally, we're gonna need two and a fourth of a cup of cold water. I feel like there's a more grammatically correct way to say that. Two cups and a fourth of water, but even that doesn't sound correct, even though it is technically more grammatically correct. Okay, uh, so yeah, we're gonna be going ahead and making uh, this particular dough first off the bat. Uh, instructions, number one, combine the spinach and cold water in a blender and blend until you can't see any little pieces of spinach. Pour it into a large cup or container and put it in the freezer for five minutes. Uh, if making this ahead of time, you can just put it in the fridge until you are ready. Uh, first things first, the spinach that I have on hand, unfortunately, 
isn't quite fully prepared. Uh, while I made a point of cutting these stems off of it ahead of time, uh, unfortunately, it's still a little bit dirty, which means we have to clean it. Uh, good news, I went ahead and I made sure that our salad spinner itself was nice and clean ahead of time. So we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna dump all this gunk in here, like such. I adjusted the uh, color balancing um, compared to the way that things looked last stream so that things would look uh, a little bit less red. I think it did a pretty good job. I think it definitely looks better than how it was previously. Uh, we're gonna temporarily take this out uh, and we are going to bring in our sync camera, of course. Have our beloved sync camera. And we're just gonna spend a little bit of time kind of using the nozzle uh, of the sink to sufficiently apply water to our leaves and clean them. Um, fun fact, the camera that I use for my sync cam is now on a new tripod. It's much more higher up, which gives you a much bigger and better view of the action going on here. I'm quite pleased with what I've managed to achieve with just this simple old Logitech C920 camera, if I gotta be honest. That camera right there that uh, you're currently uh, looking through to view me cleaning these leaves at this sink, that was the original webcam that I purchased to film myself streaming back in like, I wanna say 2019. Yeah, it was 2019. It is amazing how I have simultaneously managed to kind of hold on to that camera and find new uses for it over the years, but also how it started, that started as my main camera and now is uh, the sink camera that shows whatever it is that I'm doing when I cook at the sink. Things change, but also things stay the same, as they say. Okay. Oh, also, I don't think I really talked about it, uh, but I got a new apron. Uh, I got this for my birthday, which was on the 1st of February, about a week ago. Uh, because it's black, I decided to wear something a little bit more colorful underneath it, as opposed to in the past where I would wear typically black shirts so that they would contrast better with the more colorful apron I used to wear. Um, I liked the apron quite a bit. It was a good present. Okay. Probably gonna have to do this about two times, but we've already managed to get quite a bit of water out of it, so that's good. I've thought about getting the Elgato foot pedal because I feel like it would be a little bit more responsive than uh, some of these foot pedals that I have right here, but I'll, I'm gonna use them as much as I can use them until they really break. Okay, I think that's about as much water as we're gonna be able to get out of this thing. There we go. Now we're gonna be very careful. We're gonna put this inside of our blender, but I'm gonna be very careful that I don't accidentally nick myself against the blades as I do so. Uh, it's gonna be tricky though, because I really have to make sure that I can kind of pack as much of this stuff in. There we go. And we go ahead and put this over to the side for the time being. Probably will not need to use it anymore for the rest of the stream, uh, but it served its purpose well. Uh, okay, we got our spinach in here, uh, which means that next uh, we need to apply a little bit of water. Uh, let's go ahead, let's bring this stuff over to the sink. Uh, we need two and a fourth of a cup of this stuff. So let's start off. 
it's a little bit under. It's one. Uh, let's see, it's a little bit lacking. I'd say that's about two. Now, finally, we just need a little splash so that we can get to uh, 1.4 cups. That's about an eighth. I'd say that's a little bit more. It's like a third. Okay, I think that's about good enough. There we go. Last little droplets over there compensate so that I won't accidentally have added too much. Okay. Uh, let's put the top on the blender. And let's bring our blender machine out. Now, just a heads up, if you've never heard of Blender before, this is gonna be a little bit on the loud side. So you should probably sufficiently uh, shield your ears if you feel uh, the need to do so. I'm gonna more or less be able to tough it out without needing to do so. But for everyone else out there, you might wanna just have that little heads up. We're probably gonna like let it blend for like maybe 10 seconds or so. We'll scrape a little bit inside so that we make sure that everything's getting properly integrated and a chance to blend and then we'll go at it for another like half a minute. see where we're at. Oh, there's actually like a big leafy bunch here that wasn't getting integrated at all in the blender. That's unfortunate. Uh, let's, we're gonna do our best here with the spatula to try and like get all this detritus off of the uppermost walls and into the thick of it. And also push it down a little bit as well. There we go. Shining a little bit away so that it's not as loud. see how things are faring. Oh, look at that. Look at how nice and foamy this stuff is. We're definitely on the right track. I think, I don't think that we'll need to uh, blend it up all that much more, if at all. Let me just scoop inside it with the spatula a little bit and see what the interior looks like. Well, you can actually like hear the fizzing. Yeah, this is good. This is good. I don't think we're gonna need uh, to do any more blending. There we go. The hardest and most painful part of the stream is behind us. Oh, accidentally splattered that a little bit. 
Uh, okay, with that taken care of, uh, we're gonna go ahead and we're going to put this thing in the fridge so that it can cool a little bit over the course of the next little bit while we prepare uh, the next parts of today's stream. Now, I know you're probably expecting, oh, okay, uh, with that taken care of, Cozy's probably gonna go ahead and prepare uh, the flour uh, mixture that he's gonna need for the pizza dough, correct? Uh, not quite so fast, as we all know. A key component in pizza is the pizza sauce. Uh, and I figured, you know what? Better to make your own pizza sauce than buy some from the store, which is why we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna start preparing the pizza sauce first before we move on to the uh, flour mixture. So, uh, the pizza sauce recipe comes from budgetbites.com. Uh, that's bites spelt with a Y, like the computer term thingamabob. Uh, to make this pizza sauce, we're gonna need two tablespoons of olive oil. Uh, we are going to need uh, a clove of garlic right over here. Uh, we are going to need um, one 28 ounce can of crushed tomatoes uh, right over here. Exactly 28 ounces actually, so that's pretty nice. Uh, we're gonna need a six ounce can of tomato paste. Uh, this can is 5.5 ounces, close enough. Uh, we are gonna need half a teaspoon of sugar right over here. We are going to need three fourths a teaspoon of salt. Uh, we are gonna need a teaspoon of dried basil and half a teaspoon of oregano uh, here and here. Uh, we are going to need freshly cracked black pepper, ready to go. And we are finally gonna need, this is optional, but we're gonna do it, uh, one pinch of crushed red pepper. You know that we're gonna go with this. Okay, without further ado, let's go for it. Uh, instruction number one, we need to add our olive oil and garlic to a saucepan and cook over medium heat for one to two minutes or until the garlic is soft and fragrant. Uh, let's go ahead and bring in our cutting board first and foremost uh, so that we can cut up a little bit of our garlic. Now, normally in the past, I've discovered that if you wanna grate garlic real quickly, best do so with a grater. Uh, because we're just dealing with one itty bitty garlic clove, however, we're just gonna use uh, our knife in this one instance. Won't hurt us. Uh, there we go. Actually, before we do that, let's go ahead and let's actually heat up the olive oil in our pot first. Uh, let's go ahead and let's bring in a returning member of the Cozy Bears cooking family, uh, the stove cam. It's been a little while since we've seen this guy. I had a lot of technical issues with this guy back during the previous season, but I was able to get him up and running, for now at least, uh, and hopefully he will be able to remain with us uh, for as long as we need him. Uh, but we shall see. We shall see. There we go. That is uh, one tablespoon of olive oil. And that is two tablespoons of olive oil. Very nice. Just gonna add just a skosh more to make up for any residue olive oil that might have remained on the measuring spoon. Okay, perfect. Whew. Okay, uh, with that currently being dealt with, oh, we need to turn up the heat a little bit. So let's go ahead and let's do that. Uh, I'm gonna set it to like medium low-ish. There we go. Number one, number two, I'm making like, three lengthwise cuts like this. And then, uh, I suppose I'll cut it a bit uh, widthwise like that, and then I'll cut it from there into itty bitty small pieces. Yeah. 
There we go. And now let's cut it this way so we can get these small itty bitty pieces of garlic that we need to truly add a fragrant experience uh, to the pasta sauce that we're in the process of making. And there we go. I'd say that's a pretty nice little bunch of small crushed up garlic. There we go. Just gonna wait just a little bit more for the olive oil to heat up. Uh, hope that everybody's having a good day today. It's been a pretty decent day on my end. I've not gotten out all that much yet, but I was able to get a lot of chores done over the course of both yesterday and today, and actually play a lot of video games all the while. I've been playing a lot of Knack 2. I've been playing a little bit of Halo Infinite as well, Pokemon Legends Arceus. Uh, episode 100 of Perswise is actually coming up next week. Uh, on that episode, you can probably expect to hear a fair bit more about uh, Knack 2 and Pokemon Legends Arceus as well. Uh, let's see here. So the idea is that after uh, cooking the garlic over medium heat for one to two minutes, uh, we want to add our crushed tomatoes, our tomato paste, our sugar, our salt, our basil, our oregano, and some of our freshly cracked pepper, and as well, our pinch of red pepper, pepper flakes. So basically all the other ingredients. Um, hello, uh, only family. Uh, why did I put the stream deck in a bag? I put it in a bag because quite frequently on this show, um, I'm making dishes that involve all sorts of powders like sugar, uh, like wheat, like, you know, what have you. I have wheat right here, for example, because I'm gonna be using it in a second. Um, and I'm really concerned about the wheat accidentally dusting the stream deck and getting inside its innards. So I put it in a plastic bag so that nothing can splotch all over it. That's pretty much the idea. Huh. And I appreciate you tuning in, by the way. And not a problem at all if you want to play some video games while you tune in and watch me do my thing. I've certainly done the same with other streamers in the past. It's totally acceptable. All right. Let's bring the stove cam back into focus. Uh, I think that our olive oil is more or less about where we want it. So let's go ahead and let's get our garlic in there. Uh, Echo, set a timer for two minutes. Two minutes, starting now. All right, we're just gonna make sure that our, our garlic is like properly dispersed over there. Uh, while that's happening, let's go ahead and let's uh, crack open our cans. Oh, I'm happy that you were able to see me live. Uh, I mean, make no mistake, you know, totally fine if you need to catch a stream uh, after the fact as a VOD, but there's a special energy that comes with tuning in live. Can't be beat. Of course, while you're watching the show live, you can, you know, interact with me in the chat, but of course you can follow, subscribe to me, donate, uh, do the whole shebang, and in exchange I'll spin the prize wheel of causality over here, which will make me do all manner of things. That's a little bit of shameless shilling, but you know, it's important as a Twitch streamer that I let people in the audience know uh, what I'm all about and what they can get out of following or subscribing to me. All right. Both of our containers are open. I put their tops in the sink. Let me just shake the garlic around a little bit. It's smelling pretty decently fragrant. Uh, I suppose I can go ahead and I can put some of the uh, salts and other spices inside the crushed tomato can. Uh, let's see. Let's start with the sugar first. Uh, we need half a tablespoon of sugar. Uh, so I'm just going to go ahead and I'm going to use the half a tablespoon measuring spoon. This is the only time we'll need to actually use sugar today, which is pretty outrageous considering how much sugar we had to use last stream. Like that. Oh, there we go. The timer is up. Echo, turn off the timer. Okay, and the garlic is beginning to become slightly brown, so yeah, it is time. 
Uh, let's bring the stove cam back into focus. Uh, first things first, we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna pour our can of crushed tomatoes and sugar in here. Uh, with the power of the spoon that I had just over to the side, I'm gonna scrape things up to the best of my ability and make sure that we let none of the tomato sauce that was in this can go to waste. Uh, let's see here. It's tough, but not impossible. There we go. Uh, I'm just gonna quickly mix it up a little bit. Okay, number two, uh, we are gonna grab our tomato paste. Uh, I should make cooking videos on YouTube with my VODs. Uh, I've thought about that right now in terms of other platforms. I'm actually trying to focus more on TikTok than I am on YouTube. Uh, I recently put a, a video up on TikTok of um, me checking out the dish that I made on last week's episode, the Pokemon Donuts, and that actually performed quite well over there. So I totally agree that it would be cool for me to do something on YouTube, but I kind of got to take it one at a time, and I want to see where TikTok will lead me. That's the current situation there. Okay, just trying to do my best to make sure I can get as much of the sauce as I can out of this thing. There we go. Uh, let's see. Uh, oh, you can uh, actually, if you do exclamation point TikTok in the chat, uh, you can bring up my TikTok account. It's at Alex Cozina. And also there's a link uh, below the stream for my TikTok account as well. If you click on that directly, it will link to it. All right, uh, what else do we need to add? Let's see. Uh, might as well go ahead and let's put in our pinch of uh, crushed red pepper. Oh, that's a little bit more than a pinch. Uh, okay, well, hopefully that won't ruin the dish. I don't think it was that bad. Uh, let's see, we need uh, a teaspoon of dried basil. Let's add that in next. I'm gonna use the half teaspoon measuring spoon twice. One and two, there we go. Ah. God damn it, you can't see it on camera, but one of the caps just fell on the floor. I got it though, and we're all good. Uh, what else? Oregano. Uh, we need just a single half teaspoon of oregano, so let's do that. Et voila. Uh, let's see, we need salt and cracked black, black pepper. Those are the only two things left. Uh, let's grab our black pepper, crank a couple of things in there. Doesn't say how much to use, so I'm gonna assume that that was okay. Uh, and finally, salt. Uh, we need, I believe, three fourths of a teaspoon. Yes, that's correct. So we're gonna do our best to kind of like pour three quarter teaspoons in there. That was a little bit more, so I'll compensate going forward. Uh, that's also a little bit more. So for this final one, I'll make sure that I don't go too salty. There we go, that's for the best. Okay. With everything in there, we're gonna go ahead and we're going to stir this bad boy up, make sure that all of our spices and oils and tomato paste equally integrate into the mixture before us. So it's a nice, cohesive, rich texture that will make anybody salivate the moment that they look at it, less taste it. Go 
Okay, I'm trying to do my best to just make sure that the oil especially is like well integrated into the rest of the mixture. Okay, uh, and with everything in there, uh, the next step uh, after stirring to combine is to cover the pot and allow the pot to come to a simmer and then reduce heat to low and let simmer for 15 minutes. All right. So we will be paying extra special close attention to that stuff uh, to make sure that we set the timer when we're supposed to. Okay, that taken care of. I'm just gonna take a very quick second to put a couple of these spices away, seeing as how we no longer have any need for basil, oregano, or red pepper flakes. It's good to kind of clean up your workspace as you go along because you want to make sure that you're not living in a constant kind of nightmare chaos zone of a kitchen because that can result in all sorts of needless mishaps and really complicate the process. Uh, kind of Funny uh, is not from Montreal. They're actually a San Francisco based like YouTube entertainment channel. Um, these guys basically like partially originated from IGN back in like 2015, I wanna say. They basically split off from that company and kind of formed their own YouTube entertainment group. Uh, I had been following some of their hosts since the like IGN days and when they split off and became kind of funny, I was like, hell yeah, I wanna follow these guys wherever they go. Uh, that's their basic story. Um, I say they're based in San Francisco, by the way, but uh, the actual reality is that with the advent of working from home, there are a couple members of them that are based around other parts of the United States. There's one person on their team that's from Lake Tahoe, which is technically pretty close to San Francisco, but there's also somebody else who's from New York, for example. Uh, let's see here. Uh, let's go ahead and switch back over to our pizza dough instructions. Uh, so next step is we got to mix together our flour, our salt, and our instant yeast. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to grab myself uh, a nice little bowl out of this cabinet right over here. This is not actually the bowl that I intended on using, but actually it will be easier to see the flour inside of it. So we're gonna go ahead and use this. Uh, let me tell you, this is a huge bag of flour, but we're actually getting really close to the end of it. Uh, we need to measure out six cups of the stuff. Let's see. This is about almost exactly two cups. Nice. Whoa, Silos, thank you for the subscription. Uh, because you subscribed, uh, you, sir, are gonna get three spins on the prize wheel of causality. Uh, thank you so, so much. Uh, hello, Timish. Sorry if that's uh, not your name or not how it's pronounced. I'm just gonna call you Tim from now on. Uh, is that zero, zero flower or power flower? Uh, this is just, uh, normal all-purpose flour. I know that for the purpose of making pizza dough, it would be it would make more sense for me to use zero zero flour because this is kind of a weird, like off-kilter pizza creation. Though I figured I would just stick with all-purpose flour for the occasion. Uh, uh, only family says I'm not gonna lie. I'm so jelly of your pizza. Oh, wait till you see the finished product. It is gonna be uh, quite the spectacle. Uh, I will get around to the first of your wheel spins in just a minute, Silas. Um, let me just measure out the rest of the flour that you need to measure out first. So this thing is not really, it's not quite at simmering point just yet. We'll wait a little bit longer. That's four cups total. Oh, feel kind of bad for Overwatch. I don't feel bad for any of the people that made working at Blizzard kind of an uncomfortable place, of course, but you know, Overwatch itself never did anything wrong. Okay, that's uh, five cups of flour. Now I just need 
one more. All right, this is a little bit over a cup, so let's put some of that back in there. Uh, there we go, and yeah, it's about a cup. All right, that goes six cups of flour. I mean, you know, with Microsoft's acquisition of Blizzard, you never know uh, what's in store for the company in the future. Maybe Microsoft's acquisition will really kind of turn the company around and make them into a better place. But at least right now, there are a lot of uncertainties about the company's future. Uh, all right, let's go ahead now that we've gotten all our flour in there uh, and spin our prize wheel for the first time. <sighs> all right, one, two, three. Oh, animals are dumb. It's been a little while since we've gotten this one. Actually, we got it last week. It hasn't been that long. Uh, this is where for two minutes, I got to talk directly to you and tell you about why a random animal is dumb. Let's go ahead and let's get this queued up. Whew. Sorry, there are a lot of buttons on my stream deck. There we go. Okay, if anybody wants to suggest a random animal that I talk shit about here, you're free to do so. Uh, if you guys don't have any other suggestions, I'm gonna go ahead and ask my Amazon Echo for it to supply for me. Hold on a second, somebody just rang the doorbell. I need to go and check real quick and see if it's anybody important. Uh, nope, it does not appear that it was anyone important. All right, we're good. Echo. Name a random animal. Here's an animal, a hagfish. A hackfish? Oh, a hagfish. Okay, I was like, I've never heard of a hackfish before. Hagfish, however, H-A-G-F-I-S-H. -H. Of course I've heard of that. All right, Echo, set a timer for two minutes. Two minutes, starting now. Ladies and gentlemen, the hagfish. Do I even need to go on for an additional two minutes to tell you about why the hagfish is a piece of shit, SOB, no good animal? No, of course I don't. But alas, uh, this is what uh, Silas subscription forced me to do. So I'm here for the next, I guess, minute and 40 seconds at this point. I mean, look, if you're calling something a hag, you know that that thing sucks. If you're calling someone a fish, I mean, that's, Kind of a weird insult, but I suppose most people would identify that as an insult if you just blurted it out of the blue. If you call someone a hagfish, oh, you're really trying to cut deep. If you call a fish, an actual fish, a hagfish, you could call it anything else, but you decide to call it a hagfish, you know that you really just want to just staple gun a screw in there and just twist it in. I know that you don't use a staple gun to like shoot screws like that. They do have like a screw gun though, right? I, th those things are pretty good. I mean, they're very dangerous, but they, they're they always really kind of cool, even though you never really get to see anybody use them in a cool fashion. I feel like there's like a real lack of like cool action movies where like screw guns or staple guns are used in kind of a cool way. I bet that Jackie Chan actually has probably done a couple of movies that involve those sorts of things. But anyways, uh, let's go back to the hagfish. Yeah, I mean, really, what else is there to say? my Amazon Echo could not have chosen a better animal for me to talk shit about right off the bat. Every now and then I get an animal that's like, oh man, talk about why the striped lion is a shitty animal. And it's like, I mean, I'm kind of pulling at hairs here. There's not really a lot bad to say about a lion, but the hagfish, I mean, this thing is just irrevocably bad. It was bad in the past, it's bad now, and it's bad forever. And that's why the hagfish sucks. All right, Echo, turn off the timer. Uh, do staple guns work underwater? Is it a spring? So probably, I don't know. Uh, Guppy1387, thanks for tuning in, says uh, they are slimy and long and ugly. Yeah, I figured so. I actually don't really have a good visual representation of what a hagfish even looks like. Uh, I think that our pasta sauce is more or less at simmering point. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to set a timer. Uh, Echo, set a timer for 20 minutes. 20 minutes. 
starting now. All right. Um, it's entirely possible that the person that rang the doorbell earlier might have left a package. So give me just a quick little second. I'm just going to run to the door real quick and check if something's there. I'll be right back. Lo and behold, uh, they did deliver a package. Let's go ahead and let's open this up. I know I can technically tear this package open, but it's always more fun if you do so partially with a pair of scissors. Oh, look at that. It's another digital scale. Um, I actually already have one of these here at home, right over here. In fact, it's actually the exact same make and model. Uh, my mother was quite pleased with how this scale was turning out after I purchased it, so she asked that I uh, purchase another one so that they could have another one doing its thing at our cottage in the Eastern Townships. So glad we were able to solve that mystery. When the doorbell rang a few minutes ago, I was really concerned that it was going to be a like cousin or like aunt or uncle that decided to drop by out of the blue. And I got really concerned that I was going to have to like pause my stream for like 20 minutes. Uh, thankfully, that was not the case. All right. I'm just gonna schlep the packaging out of the way. Uh, and let's get back to business. Uh, well, I'm gonna go ahead and I'm just gonna lower the heat just a little bit on our tomato sauce because I got the sense that it's maybe a little bit too much right now. Uh, all right, got our flour in here, which means that next we gotta add our uh, instant yeast and our salt. Uh, we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna add our salt first. We need just a solid, teaspoon of salt. There we go, we're gonna measure this out. There we go, it's a little bit more than half a teaspoon. And there we go, that works out pretty well. Uh, we probably need a spoon to mix this up, so let's grab our spoon. And the spoon dropped on the floor. I don't even know how that happens. I'm gonna put this by the sink for the time being. All right, spoon number two, don't fail me. Uh, let's go ahead and let's measure out some of our instant yeast. I believe we need, how much of this stuff do we need? Uh, we need two teaspoons. Perfect. I'm just gonna go ahead and I'm gonna use a full teaspoon measuring spoon for this one. There we go, teaspoon number one. And teaspoon number two. Et voila. And I'm just gonna very quickly close this thing up and seal it back into its bag so it's not spilling everywhere. This is one of those things where you don't really want it spilling into a lot of other foods unless you specifically are asking for it, you know? Okay. Gonna go ahead and we're gonna give this a nice, uh, quick little stir. Just try and arrive at as cohesive of a powdery mixture as possible right off the bat. Looks pretty good. All right, let's go ahead and let's do our second wheel spin. All right. One, two, three. Oh, lo and behold, first time that it's happened in season three of Code Spirits Cooking, uh, we are gonna be eating ourselves a durian candy. Uh, durian, of course, a much beloved fruit uh, with a spiny exterior and a slimy but sweet interior. Unfortunately, the slimy and sweet interior tends to be very stinky, and that stinky awfulness tends to translate into most other foods that are made with durian, including uh, durian hard candies, which is what I have right here. Let me bring the camera in a little bit closer. Yeah. 
Doesn't look like it would be particularly painful, but let me tell you, this stuff pretty sucks. It pretty sucks. I know that's not grammatically correct, but I'm, I'm coining it right here, right now. If in the year 2121, they wanna ask, oh, what did Cozy Bear bring to society? What did he contribute to the, you know, continuing advancement of human civilization? You can say that he invented the term pretty suck. All right, well, speaking of sucking. No. Yeah, this is just not great. It's just not great. But I know that there are a lot of other people out there that really just dig that durian candy, so. I'm not gonna try and yuck someone else's yum, literally in this case. Uh, by the way, typically uh, I only allow for that particular uh, prize wheel spot to be redeemed two times a day. So if in the future this ends up landing on durian candy, I'll be forced to eat another one of these nasty ass candies. Uh, but if it lands on it a third time, well, I'll have to respin. All right. Pasta sauce is coming along quite nicely. Uh, well, further ado, let's move on to the next step ahead of us. Um, let's see here. After our spinach water has been chilling for at least five minutes in the fridge, uh, the foam on top will have gotten a little bit frosty, if not frozen. That's particularly true if we were chilling it in the freezer, but that's not uh, the case in this instance. Um, we are gonna want to use a spoon to mix up the foam into the thing. We'll do that as soon as we get the spinach water out of the fridge. Uh, and then it says that if we were to have an electric mixer, we would want to turn the mixer on low and slowly pour the spinach water into the flour mixture and then let it work the dough for like six to eight minutes. Uh, we don't have a stand mixer in our case, so instead we're just gonna be kneading it by hand. Um, let's go ahead and just move things out of the way so that we have the space to do so. Um, last time uh, I did this, I found that I didn't need to use uh, any extra flour to help uh, unstickify uh, the dough in question. But obviously I have a little bit of flour over here that we can always rely on if we need to do so. Okay. All right, I'm breaking into the durian candy. It's really bad when you just break into it like this, but you reach a certain point when you're suckling on these things where you just need to get it over with. Hmm. This one looks super foamy to me. Um, here we go. First things first, we're gonna take our uh, blades out of the goop. We're just gonna do our best to kind of like scrape as much of the spinach matter off of it. Ultimately, it's not the end of the world if we don't get all of the spinach matter uh, that we have inside this receptacle into the dough we're making. Because we wanna make sure that our dough uh, isn't too watery. We wanna make sure that it's uh, nice and floury. Uh, but you know, you still wanna do your best. Okay, I think that's about, uh, that's about as good as we can do for now. Mm, hold on a sec, I'm just trying to make sure that I put the blade over here in such a way that I won't accidentally nick myself with it later. And now we're just gonna mix up our spinach mixture so that the foam that has risen to the top can be kind of well integrated into the rest of it. Okay, I think that's about as good as we can do. Uh, let's see, we have about 10 minutes left on our timer for our uh, pasta sauce, which actually works out quite nicely uh, because we need about 10 or so minutes to knead this stuff. So let's go ahead and let's mix our spinach water into our flour mixture and let's give it a good kneading. Hold on a second, I'm gonna do what I can with the spoon and then I'll switch over to the spatula. There we go. All 
Obviously, I'm not going to be able to get every single little speck, but again, we want to do the best that we can. Okay. Let's go ahead and let's mix this thing up to the best of our ability. It's going to appear really shaggy for a period of time, but eventually with enough kneading, we'll be able to get it to a point where it becomes pretty cohesive. Um, but it's going to take a bit. And let me tell you, my arms are going to get pretty, pretty tired. And I will do my best to try and cover that up by taking quick little micro breaks, stretching them a little bit here and there, make myself look real cool. But, oh, let me tell you, I am going to be tired. And the idea is that eventually we will switch over to using our hands for this uh, portion of the creation of the dough. But we want to try and kind of mix up as much of the flour into the dough as possible during this step with our spoon so that our hands aren't becoming overly floury. <sighs> so we're just sort of reaching into the bottom because that's where a lot of excess flour tends to crumble down to and we're kind of lifting it up out of the bottom and mixing it into the rest. Okay. All right. I think that's about as much as we can do there. So I'm going to begin shagging this together with my hands. Pasta sauce continues to come along well. Actually, you know what? Before I do so, I've been touching a lot of things, including that package which was left at the door. Before I go ahead and shag together my dough, uh, let me just give my hands a very quick little wash. There we go. There we go. All right. It's about, there are about seven minutes left on the clock. I thought I'd be able to start actually like, you know, working the dough with my hands a little bit sooner. So after the timer beeps, I'll give myself like another like minute or so to kind of work it. We want to make sure, uh, we'll know that our dough has been sufficiently kneaded when it becomes very kind of pokey and elastic, which is obviously something that's a little bit difficult to see on stream, but obviously I'll be able to know with my hands when we get there. So now what we're doing is we're just sort of mulching everything together, forming it into like a single cohesive kind of ball of dough and all the while kind of doing our best to grab what little like stray flour is left at the bottom of the bowl and inserting it into the dough ball like such. And once we've gotten to the point where we pretty much have a single ball, even if it is kind of shaggy looking, we'll switch over to the counter. I think, I think we're there. Yes, I think we are there. There we go. Not a lot left at the bottom of the bowl, which I'm gonna move out of the way. All right, let's begin kneading this stuff. So what we like to do is we like to kind of fold this thing over itself and then push it forward with the palms of our hands, like such. We do that over and over, and every now and then we can be a little bit fancy. We can bring it high in the air, and slam it down like that to further help it build up its gluten and add to its elasticity. It's really funny, when I was mixing this up in the bowl, it looked very floury, but now that it's actually being kneaded out on the counter right here, it is way more of a kind of slimy little dough ball. I think 
You know, I think I might need to actually add a little bit of extra flour. It's not overly sticky, but it's just sticky enough that I feel like I need to compensate a little bit. Let's just add just a little bit. There we go. And we will add more as we go along if we feel like we need to. All right. Et voila. When I was, you know, originally kind of conceptualizing this particular recipe, I was thinking, you know, a real easy way to do this, right, is just to add a little bit of green food dye to the dough. Because um, that's, if you want to just create green dough, you can just do that and, you know, you're kind of good to go. But I figured that it would just make... Uh, for a more interesting project if I actually tried to mix a spinach into the dough. I know that some people are really kind of repulsed by the idea. To them, a pure pizza dough doesn't have like any extra leafy greens or whatnot mixed in. But I wanted to give it a shot and, you know, see if I discovered that I had created an entirely new food uh, that I quite love. Mm. Uh. The one thing about creating this kind of dough is, as you can see, it's very kind of spotty. That's because there are a lot of little pieces of spinach uh, mixed into the dough that I wasn't able to kind of fully mince up earlier. Um, but I suspect that like when I actually cook it into pizza format, I won't really be able to kind of taste the individual spots all that much. I suspect that largely I'll just kind of taste the dough itself there won't be like a, a lot of like texture to it, if you know what I mean. <sighs> All right. I think we're pretty good in terms of the uh, quotient of flour in this pizza dough ball. I don't think that we're gonna need to add any more. There are about two minutes left on the timer, by the way. So just a few more minutes of giving this thing a good kneading, really kind of glutenifying it up. There we go. It's a little bit too bad that my stream deck is right over there because it actually kind of interferes with how much space I can use to knead up the dough during this part of the cooking process, but it's all right. It is a-okay. I can feel it. I can definitely feel the kind of gluten and elasticity beginning to build up in the dough. Oh. I heard a little uh, thing of water escape from the pan of tomato sauce behind me. I was concerned for a second that it was beginning to boil over, but I think that some steam just managed to escape and became water again. All right. <sighs> All right, there's about 50 seconds left on the timer. So that means we're gonna do this for like another 50 seconds. We'll take the tomato sauce off heat, and then we'll do it for maybe like another minute or so. Whew. Whew. Again, I'm really trying to tough it out and fake it, but this is stuff. This is tough. This is quite strenuous. Ten, nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. 
Echo, turn off the timer. All right, I'm gonna move this bad boy over here to this burner that does not currently have any heat underneath it. Uh, Echo, set a timer for two minutes. Two minutes, starting now. Whew. Hope that everybody's day is going as well as it can be. Gotta be honest, there's something really, really satisfying about just kneading a dough like this. It takes a while. You can't really do anything else in the background except, I guess, watch a movie even. Um, but there's just something really kind of satisfying about it. There's something very cathartic about it, you know? Can definitely feel this thing I said earlier that I was beginning to feel it begin to kind of gluten up and become nice and pokey it is especially pokey and stretchy and elasticy at this point oh man thank you to the yeast for doing your part in the creation of this unusual snaky culinary creation echo how much time is left on the timer you have 40 seconds. 40 seconds. Okay. After I complete this, one, I'm going to do my final uh, of the three wheel spins thus far, but also I'm going to need a cup of water. <sighs> Echo, turn off the timer. And there we go, we have ourselves a nice little dough ball. Uh, once we have allowed our dough to sufficiently rise, uh, the next step, sorry, I'm getting things out of order there. Uh, once we have allowed our ball of dough uh, to become sufficiently glutinous by uh, applying a lot of kneading to it, uh, we're supposed to let it rise a little bit. So. Uh, let's go ahead and let's find ourselves a bowl that we can put it in to let it rise inside of. I was thinking of maybe just reusing uh, this bowl from earlier. So, you know, what? let's go ahead and let's do that. I need to wash uh, my hands at the same time. So we'll kill two birds and one stone by doing this. Wash our hands and we'll make ourselves a receptacle for the dough to rise inside of all at once. Give a second. There we go, we're gonna just use a sponge to kind of really clean out some of the tougher bits inside the bowl. Okay, I'm gonna switch to hotter water. To really deal with what remains of it. It's a little bit tough for some of the other bits to be cleaned up, but it's okay. It doesn't have to be perfect for what we're gonna do. Okay, I'm gonna switch over to a cooler temperature. Just do the final bit of cleansing to make sure that there's no soap. There we go. Okay. Unfortunately, uh, our dish rack is not currently uh, here at the moment, so we can't use it to uh, let it dry over time. So instead, uh, I'm just going to grab some paper towel. I'm going to do my best to use that to clean the exterior and interior of it. Make it nice and dry 
ish for when we need to put our dough in. Don't want to overuse paper towel though. Uh, okay. Uh, where is, right, there it is. We're gonna dab some olive oil on this piece of paper towel right here so that we can sufficiently grease up the interior of the bowl. And you're going to, or so daintily, plop our dough boy into the bowl. We're gonna cover it with additional olive oil so it's nice and greased up itself, like a big greasy boy. And then we're gonna uh, grab a little bit of Glad Wrap. Uh, we're gonna grease up the underside of the Glad Wrap with the same piece of paper towel. We're going to drape that over the bowl, like such. I'm gonna add another little thing of Glad Wrap over there so that it is truly fully entirely covered up. Damn it. There we go, that's pretty good. Uh, and there we go. And now the recipe instructions state that we have to leave this thing to rise for uh, two hours on the counter at the very least, and then we'll be free to continue using it. All right, let's go ahead, let's kick back, and let's wait. Nah, I'm just kidding. Uh, thankfully, ahead of time, I had the foresight to prepare ourselves another batch uh, of the exact same kind of spinach dough, which we're gonna be using for the remainder of the stream. As you can see, it looks quite a bit different from uh, the bowl of dough that we just created because uh, the spinach dough here has risen quite a bit, uh, even after leaving it in the fridge overnight to kind of slow the rise a little bit. So this is gonna be quite exciting. Before uh, we begin dealing with our dough, however, uh, let's go ahead, let's A, uh, grab ourselves a quick glass of water because I am quite parched at this point. Uh, and then after I grab myself some water, we're gonna do our third wheel spin. All right, hits the spot. Okay, one, two, and three. Oh, Bionicle book time. Uh, this is where we read uh, from the illustrious Bionicle Chronicles number one, uh, Tale of the Toa, and learn all the secrets that there are to learn about the vast and unforgiving world of Matanui. Let's go ahead, let's queue up that particular mode and let's jump right in. Uh, last time on Bionicle Chronicles number one, uh, the Toa had reunited for the very first time in millennia, uh, and were in the middle of a meeting discussing what it is they should do next. Gally, who has been remaining relatively quiet this entire time at the meeting, uh, has decided to speak up. Gally spoke, interrupting Kopaka's thoughts. Well, brothers, she said, turning your gaze to take in all of them. I suppose that's enough talk of the past. We should start discussing what comes next, yes? For despite all the interesting elemental powers we may have, I expect that our best weapon is our minds. Kopaka almost smiled. At last, someone was making sense. You're right, Gali, Tahu said. We need to find these masks uh, we seek as quickly as possible. The Turaga of the village told me they will give us great powers. I know my own mask gives me the powers of protection, or shielding. That's right, Pohatu interrupted. 
Brother Kopaka found a mask of shielding too. Tahu frowned. Yes, he said shortly, sounding irritated. Well, there are five more masks out there for each of us. Once again, Kopaka held back a smile. Obviously, Tahu was annoyed that someone else had beaten him to the first mask. Onua looked thoughtful. According to my Turaga, the masks are hidden all over the island and Makuta has set the Rahi creatures to guard them. So our quest won't be easy. Fine, fine, Tahu sounded impatient. Anyway, the important thing is to find them, fast. We'll split into smaller groups. Gali and Liwa, you can search the jungle and beaches together. Onua and Kopaka can check the caves of Owahi. Oh, sorry, hold on a second. I made a mistake. Onuwahi, not Owahi. I apologize, I would not prespirch the noble names of that Bionicle universe in that fashion. Uh, Gali and Liwa, you can search the jungle and beaches together. Onua and Kopaka can check the caves of Anuwahi. And Pohatu, you can come with... Hold a quick second, Brother Tahu, Liwa interrupted. If speed is what we're after, why bother with the pair matching? Why not each of us body search on our own? Onua shrugged. Our fiery brother has a good plan, he said calmly. Working in pairs makes sense. It strikes a balance between speed and caution. Gally was shaking her head. Brothers, we have been brought together for a reason. I think we ought to stick together, at least until we know exactly what we're up against. Pohatu nodded. She's right, he said. Trust me, these Rahi creatures are nothing to face alone. But if we travel together, they won't give us any trouble. Right, Kopaka? And that'll be all for now. We will once again return to the world of Matanui on a later occasion. Okay, so here's what comes next. Uh, we are gonna take uh, our risen pre-prepared dough out of this bowl. Uh, we're gonna punch it down. We're gonna knead it for just about a minute or so so that we can kind of reactivate it. Uh, after that, mm. I'm gonna divide it into three-ish equal portions. I might actually wanna use the scale for this part. Uh, and then we are going to just let it rise just a very small amount of time, like 30 minutes or so at room temperature. Um, and yeah, from there we'll figure things out. Uh, let me go ahead, let me just grab, there we go. I'm grabbing another cutting board because we'll be using this to uh, let the dough rise on after we have uh, sufficiently reactivated it. And we're also gonna sprinkle a little bit of flour on our cutting board for the re-rising. Just so that it doesn't stick to the bottom of the cutting board after it has risen. That's the idea, at least. Okay. Gonna punch down it a little bit, help it release a little bit of air. Right. Just gonna go ahead and I'm gonna put this bowl over here for the time being. We're just kneading it a little bit right here and now, just so that we can kind of relieve it of some of the extra little pockets of air that invariably, understandably, are gonna probably still be inside of it. Actually, I'm thinking things over in my head. For what we're gonna do next, we're actually gonna need to split the dough into four equal portions, not three. It'll all make sense in due time. It's unfortunately not something that's really being picked up on the lav mic that I'm using, uh, but every single time I push it into the counter and knead it a little bit, you can hear the dough squeaking because little pockets of air are being released from it. Once more or less all of the squeaking has dissipated, that means that uh, we will be ready to take our dough to the next phase. Just a little bit more. Oh, that was a big squeak over there. Let's do 10 more. 
One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and ten. All right. Uh, let's go ahead. Where do we? Here we go. We have ourselves a knife. We're gonna go ahead and do our best to kind of cut this into two equal proportions. Uh, let's see. Yeah. This thing's a little bit sticky. A little bit on the sticky side. I'm gonna just roll it around in a little bit of the flour from earlier, just to make it a little bit more of a manageable doughy boy. Same thing with this guy. All right, let's see. This is uh, almost exactly two pounds. This guy is... Uh, it's a little bit lacking. Let's just add a little bit on to this boy. Now let's see. Add a, keep adding a little bit more here. Let's see, that's uh, one pound and 13 ounces. And this guy is now one pound and 15 ounces. This is one pound and 14 ounces. And this is one pound and 14 ounces and just a little bit extra. All right, close enough. They're now about both one pound and 14 ounces and a little bit extra. All right. Once again, actually, I'm gonna cut them on the cutting board. Makes more sense. Don't wanna ruin the counter. All right. This one we have about 13.5 ounces. We have about uh, one pound and one ounce. Sorry, I got a little bit confused for a sec there. All right. So we gotta take a little bit of the dough from that one and give it over to this one. 14.1 ounces. Oh, still over a pound. 14.6 ounces. 15.8 ounces. 15.3 ounces. 15.2 ounces, all right. Man, having a digital scale like this is really quite useful. All right. So we've got our nice little round ball of dough over here. Same thing with this ball of dough. This guy is 15.3 ounces. This guy is 14.8 ounces. Pretty close. 15.0 ounces. 15.0 ounces, perfect. That went by really fast that time. Okay. Uh, we used up a little bit of the flour that was on the cutting board, so I'm just gonna grab some more of this stuff and put it back on the cutting board. Again, just spreading it around like that. There we go. There we go. There we go. And there we go. Uh, and now the last thing that we need to add to this little magic trick that we're in the process of developing on the flies, we need to add a damp towel. So we're gonna take this dish towel right over here. We're gonna really wring it out until there is just the faintest bit of moisture left on it. Uh, and then we are going to put it on top and that will ensure that as the little dough balls rise a little bit extra, 
uh, they are not uh, being dried out in the process. All right, perfection. All right. There we go, perfect. And so we've got that on there, like that. And we're gonna just put it underneath like that. We're just gonna leave it at like that. We're not gonna put on another timer. We're just gonna kind of do everything else that we need to do in the time being uh, to prepare for the next part of our cooking process. Oh, oh there we go. We got a notification that our kitchen scale had arrived. Uh, give me a second, I need to pull the top off of this uh, sauce. I don't know why it was so hard to remove the top. Uh, let me grab ourselves a hot plate. Also, we don't need to show the stove view anymore, so we're gonna move that out. Mm, gotta say, smells pretty good, pretty fragrant, exactly how we want it to be. We don't want it too hot though, so we're gonna keep the cover off of it for the time being while we keep it here. Uh, we're also gonna want a lot of space to work with. So I'm gonna go ahead and I'm just gonna schlep some things away that we don't need anymore. We don't need the salt. Uh, so we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna put the salt back in the salt corner from whence it came. Uh, same thing with the instant yeast. We're gonna put that back in its cabinet uh, next to the uh, active dry yeast. Oh, hold on a second. We need to arrange this a little bit better. There we go. Uh, what else? We don't need any of our pastry flour. I brought this stuff out in case we would run out of the normal all-purpose flour. We do not. Uh, we're not going to need any more of our plastic wrap because we only need that to wrap up our dough ball. So that's being put away. Uh, what else? Uh, everything else can stay. Oh, hold on a second. Don't need any more sugar, so we're putting that away. There we go. There we go. All right. We're gonna bring out a couple of things from the fridge that we've been keeping nice and cool inside there that will come in useful in the next couple of steps. I probably shouldn't put this too close to the pasta sauce because it's a little bit on the hot side. There we go. I'll put this stuff there and there. Perfect. <sighs> okay, while we let this stuff do its thing for a little bit, I figured that this would be a good time uh, to do snacks and collation. This is of course the segment in Cozbear's Cooking where I rank and review all manner of international snacks. And let me tell you, I got some interesting little things this time around that I think I'm gonna enjoy more than the nacho cheese and salsa that we had last time. Hello everybody, my name is Alexander Kazina, AKA Cozy Bear, and I would like to cordially invite you to Snacks and Collation, the recurring segment on Cozy Bear's Cooking in which I rank all manner of international and delectable snacks. Uh, last time around, I ranked Arizona branded nacho cheese and chips, and let me tell you, that stuff was not very good. I was a little bit disappointed. This time around, however, uh, I have a couple of things to taste test that I think are gonna prove surprisingly good. I think that these things are really going to bring home the bacon, as you could say, uh, which is an ironic thing to say because these things definitely don't have any bacon inside of them. Ladies and gentlemen, allow me to introduce you to three exotic and unusual Capri Sun flavors that I found uh, at the exact same uh, international foods market that I found the Arizona chips at. This is Capri Sun Fun Alarm. This is Capri Sun Mystic Dragon, and this is Capri Sun Safari Fruits. I was floored when I found these Capri Sun flavors and I did a little bit of digging. Turns out that these Capri Sun flavors are actually very popular in the Czech Republic. I say popular because I don't know if they're actually made in the Czech Republic as well, because clearly this text is in English. Maybe they like 
maybe it's like primarily made in the Czech Republic and they like bring it over to England and then from England they got, they made their way to this international foods market. Either way, I'm pretty excited to try all three of them. I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna start with the um, Safari Fruits flavor because I think that it's gonna probably be the most straightforward of all the three flavors and I'll save the Mystic Dragon for last. Uh, so first things first, oh, interesting. The, the straw that they package with the Capri Sun is actually one of these disposable straws, which like is one of those things where like, I'm not buying like juice packets like this anymore because I'm not like a kid in grade school. I didn't even know that like grade school kids were having to deal with the menace of the disposable straw themselves. So that's unusual. Well, it sticks in there pretty easily. Uh, now here's the thing, the Safari Fruits package it has obviously a lion and a lion cub on it. Uh, it has a zebra sipping from a pondo. We can see some uh, giraffes over in the distance. In terms of fruit on this bad boy, we have what appears to be a lemon, uh, some tangerine pieces, a uh, orange, a, what I believe is a pear, and a definitely a pineapple. So I don't really know if a lot of these fruits are necessarily what you would call safari fruits, for example, uh, like the pineapple, for instance, but I mean, certainly it does evoke a very kind of windswept, like orangey kind of hue feeling, which I guess is safari like. Well, whatever, in any case, let's give it a shot. Hmm. Pretty good, pretty good. This is right off the bat, definitely more enjoyable than some of the other snacks that we've had on this show in the past. Does it really, I don't feel like this thing really kind of evokes the feeling of, it doesn't really directly kind of call back to the flavor of any of the fruits that we can see on the front of this thing. Oh, damn it. I'm looking at the instructions on the back and everything is in Czech. I don't think that there's a single thing in English here. So unfortunately we can't really make out what kind of fruits were primarily put in this thing. Uh, there's definitely a bit of a citrusy taste, but like things like the pineapple or the pear, I can't make out at all. Hmm. Probably a bit of a mistake to, oh, hold on, hold on. I'm getting some pretty strong orangey afternotes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I can definitely, I can definitely taste the, the orangey aftertaste. I'm pretty disappointed, honestly, with this one. I was expecting that this thing would be able to supply just, you know, a little bit more of that like citrusy fruit punch. Uh, overall, not bad. Um, I was about to say earlier before the little bit of citrus after uh, taste hit me. I don't think I'm gonna wanna uh, go ahead and drink all three of these things. One of these things probably has a ton of sugar, even though it says no sweeteners or artificial colors or preservatives. Um, so I'm just gonna kind of leave this half finished. Uh, overall, I gotta give it a six out of 10. I don't think that it's particularly bad. I think that we've definitely had much worse snacks on this show, but I feel like it doesn't really live up to the promise of either being a safari fruits uh, explosion of flavor or just a citrus fruit fruits uh, explosion of flavor. And again, can't really taste the pineapple either. All right, I'm just gonna quickly schlep this bad boy back in the fridge. Well, let's try out Fun Alarm next. Now, I personally am a huge fan of any particular um, snack food that bases its entire existence around, hey, uh, we have a bunch of gremlins that are causing trouble. They're causing too much trouble, so we gotta turn on the Fun Alarm. I personally always find that to be a lot of fun. Um, as you can see here, we have ourselves a purple, a green, and a blue gremlin. Um, kind of looks like the old like Google Android mascot. Uh, oh, and there's a little like, there's like a little uh, alarm icon over here. I didn't even notice that. Uh, in terms of fruit, we got ourselves um, a strawberry. We got ourselves what looks like a lemon, but I'm assuming it's just a very yellow looking orange. We got ourselves an apple. We got some cherries, I think, and we got some, they look like blueberries, but I think they're another kind of berry. Ugh. I kind of see the problem with the um, disposable straws is obviously, you know, caring about the environment is good. It's good to make straws that are disposable in that fashion. The problem is, is that when you try to take them out of their little plastic prison uh, to use them to drink 
fruit juice. Ah, oh, fuck, fuck. They always just bend every which way. It's too much, too much. All right, let's go ahead, let's shove this guy in. Oh no, is it too bent out of shape now? No, don't tell me, don't tell me. Fuck. All right, well, we're gonna use a knife to make ourselves a nice hole, and then we're gonna stick this in, and hopefully we can get this thing to work. All right, let's go. Hmm. Uh, this one definitely has a lot more of an apple-y taste to it. I'm not really tasting a whole lot of the other uh, fruits that are in this thing. I'm not getting any notes of like the berries or the strawberry or the um, even the lemon slash orange, but let me give it another little sip. It's complicated. This one definitely has more of a flavor than the other Capri Sun that we had earlier. But also like, I'm just not a, that big of a fan of apple juice compared to orange juice. I just think that apple is kind of like a, it's just kind of a dull flavor compared to something like orange, which just has a little bit more texture to it. Hmm, I'm gonna have to go ahead. I'm gonna go ahead and give it a six as well. I, I realize that I'm handing out a lot of sixes on this show and really it's not, a matter of me, I'm just mixing up the uh, pizza sauce over here a little bit. It's not a matter of me being like, oh man, I'm a really hard critic. It's just, there are a lot of good snacks out there and I don't wanna hand out prizes nilly willy. All right, we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna schlep the rest of the stuff in the fridge. Uh, let's finish strong. This is the one I have a lot of hopes riding on. Uh, this, is Capri Sun Mystic Dragon. Sorry, I got a little bit confused for a second there because I heard like a weird ringing. Probably totally normal. Let's have a look at this dragon over here. So you can see it's a uh, beautiful looking pink dragon. We have a bunch of uh, fruits alongside him, uh, including an apple, uh, several strawberries, some banana, and probably most intriguing, of course, a dragon fruit. Now here's the thing. I don't particularly care for dragon fruit. I don't think that it's a particularly tasty fruit, but you say, hey, we got this dragon flavored snack and it's got dragon fruit in it. I'm there, I'm all there and I'm all for it. And I'm ready to have a dragon of an explosion of flavor in my mouth. So without further ado, let's try and jab our disposable straw in there. There we go, worked like a charm. Uh, and let's go ahead and let's see if this dragon is all it's cracked up to be. Hmm. Hmm. I'm looking at this uh, like dragon artwork now. I didn't realize that there's actually a, there's a dude riding on a green dragon uh, over here in the corner. It's kind of hard to make out, kind of like in uh, the DreamWorks movie, How to Drain Your Dragon. Here's the thing, I definitely, compared to the prior two Capri Suns I've tasted, I've definitely gotten a lot more notes of the individual fruits that are on the cover of this thing. I can definitely taste the strawberry, I can definitely taste the banana, I can definitely taste the apple. I'm getting a little bit of a, like, something extra in there, and I'm gonna assume that that's the dragon fruit, but Dragon fruit's also not something I've had a whole lot, so I don't know if I can immediately identify it as being that. Uh, Silas in the chat says, that might be the coolest art on the Capri Sun so far. The dragon is rad. It is pretty cool. Like, genuinely, I thought about picking up this bad boy pretty much solely because of the dragon. Um, yeah, it's a, it's a real cool illustration. Let's give it another sip. Hmm. See, the problem is, is that I feel like with the previous two Capri Suns, uh, you get through most of it, doesn't taste like a whole lot, and then they have really good aftertastes. This one actually tastes like something for most of its duration, but then the aftertaste is just kind of weird. Mm. Overall though, like, here's the thing. 
And every now and then on Snacks and Cold Asinal, the recurring weekly segment here on Code Spirits Cooking, which is itself a show that happens every week, uh, we got to give our snacks extra points for featuring something extra and beyond the norm uh, in addition to how they actually taste like. And in this case, you really got to hand it to that dragon illustration on the cover. And for that reason, I got to give this bad boy a seven. I think that it's not especially better than the other two Capri Sun flavors that we tasted tonight, but that dragon is real cool. All right. Uh, and with that out of the way, uh, I should mention uh, before I forget that, in fact, I actually got a fourth Capri Sun flavor. Uh, however, it's Capri Sun Peach Iced Tea. Now, here's the thing. Peach Iced Tea, not perhaps as common of a uh, tea, uh, not as common of a, I was trying to say taste and flavor at the same time and came out weird. Not as common of a flavor as, say, like lemon iced tea, but... I don't feel like this is particularly unique enough that we need to review it on the show. I will say, um, some pretty cool looking uh, illustration on the cover of this one. We've got some polar bears and penguins playing around in the snow. I think it's a very fitting illustration for, you know, what is supposed to be ostensibly peach iced tea. Um, however, I think I'm gonna enjoy this one on my own time. I also wanna make sure that I'm not injecting too much sugar into myself all at once. So there's that too. All right, without further ado, let's go ahead and let's bring Snacks and Colation to the end. Hmm. I'm just gonna go ahead and I'm gonna move this plate out of the way. All right. Uh, Let's go ahead and let's see how much these bad boys have risen. All right, all right, pretty good looking. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and I'm going to move our towel out of the way. Uh, so here is where I reveal the plan for the rest of this evening. Uh, we are gonna be making ourselves um, pizzas, but not just any pizza. Uh, we are going to be taking uh, these two dough balls over here, and we are going to be basically flattening them out into a typical pizza disc shape. And then from there, uh, we are going to take these other two dough balls, and we're going to fashion those uh, into a bunch of snake shapes. I know you're probably wondering this entire time, you know, what's the purpose for making the dough green? It's because we're making ourselves some doughy green pizza snakes. And we're going to make ourselves a big, long, uh, dough pizza snake that's going to wrap around the entirety of the pizza's circumference. But in addition to that, we are also uh, going to fashion for ourselves uh, a bunch of smaller snakes, depending on how much dough that we have, which are going to go on the pizza themselves, uh, much like, uh, for example, what's, uh, what's that green stuff that they put on pizza a whole lot? Right, bell peppers. I don't know how I forgot about that. I don't like bell peppers on pizza, I gotta be honest with you. So you'll have to forgive me there. Uh, okay. First things first, I'm gonna go ahead and we're going to... Uh, sprinkle ourselves some flour on our work surface over here. Uh, we're also gonna just make our work surface a little bit more workable as well. Uh, and we're also gonna go ahead and we're gonna start heating up our oven. Uh, I am gonna set it to uh, 500 degrees convection bake. Uh, actually, hold on a second. No, hold on a second. We're gonna wanna set it to 525. There we go. And without further ado, let's go ahead and let's begin stretching out our pizza dough. Ooh, this stuff is, let me tell you, this is a stretchy ass dough. Definitely not difficult for me to kind of make it bigger, at least compared to the way that pizzas have been in the past. Uh, I'm gonna put it on the side of the counter like this though, just so that we can let gravity take its course. Second thought, this is actually a little bit more difficult than I was anticipating it to be. Hold on a second, let's, we're gonna go around the edge like this and we're gonna do the 
stretch the edge technique that we've used in the past. Unfortunately, the center of this stuff has gotten a little bit thin, but I think we'll be okay. I might need to cover it up at some point. You know what? It's normally you don't want to do this in pizza making, but considering that we're dealing with a style of dough that is not typically used in pizza making, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to bring out the rolling pin because this is, it's been a little bit more tricky to roll this thing up than I have typically been used to in the past. And so I'm just going to use this to make my life just a little bit easier. go. Just trying to make sure that I kind of maintain as much of a round shape as possible. Again, there's some pizziolas that are screaming at me right now for using a rolling pin. And to you guys, I say, I'm sorry, but this stuff is unusually difficult to work with, much more so than other pizza doughs that I've worked with in the past. All right, I think that's about good enough in terms of size. Uh, let's grab ourselves some parchment paper. Okay, and this is where things get tricky. We have to make sure that we properly uh, bring this thing onto the parchment paper, which is uh, atop the pizza peel. There we go, not so hard. And now we've got to just make sure that we kind of properly fashion it into a relatively round shape. Whoa! Kit underscore TV 22 is rating with a party of seven. Holy smokes! And you guys came in at a really good moment. I'm in the process of uh, preparing the pizza shapes that are gonna be going in the oven ever so soon. Thank you so much for the raid and a howdy do to everybody that just dropped into the channel. Hope that you're all having a good time today. Whew. So yeah, right now, uh, we're in the process of spreading out our spinach pizza dough, like such. We've managed to make it into a nice round shape, like such, uh, and now, uh, we are going to be moving this over to the side for just a second uh, so that we can use our other pizza dough ball to make ourselves some snakes. Uh, this is my first time doing this, so we're going to have to figure this out as we go. I'm wondering... Mm, you know what? I think it would make most sense if instead of using... Uh, like instead of fashioning multiple smaller snakes that will go on the pizza, I'm just gonna fashion one snake boy. Uh, let me grab just a little bit of additional flour just so that we can make sure that our surface uh, doesn't become too damp for me spreading this thing around. Whoa, kit underscore TV 22, thank you for the subscription. Yes, this is indeed episode two. Uh, first subscribing to me, uh, you are going to get a grand total of three wheel spins. Uh, let's go ahead and let's do one of those wheel spins right here and right now. Thank you so much. Oh boy, here we go. We got to do five push-ups. Uh, let's go ahead and let's get that out of the way right here and right now. Give me just a quick little second. There we go. Uh, I was gonna wash my hands, but my hands are already gonna be dirty after I do push-ups, so might as well uh, do so after. One, two, three, four, five. Whew. Uh. 
Uh, thank you for joining me in solidarity and doing push-ups as well. You don't need to, for the record. I just need to do push-ups. All right, I'm gonna wash my hands real quick. We're gonna form our uh, snake. And then after we have formed the snake, uh, we are going to attach it to the pizza. After that happens, I'll do my second wheel spin. Uh, 95 left for the day, wow. That's a lot of push-ups. Uh, yes, yeah, so I hope so that we get to read a little bit more from Bionicle Chronicles. That book is always a good time. Truly, the king of books, they call it. Okay. I'm trying to really kind of stretch this log of dough out so that we have ourselves a nice big snake that we'll be able to stretch around the entirety of the pizza. You know what though, I'm beginning to become concerned. This is a lot of dough and I'm a little bit concerned that if I, <laughs> this might really kind of puff up into something that's maybe a little bit too unmanageable and unwieldy. So you know what I'm gonna do? You know what I'm gonna do? I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna chop this bad boy in half. I feel bad for him too, but I don't want a situation where I have too much dough on hand and it just creates a big conundrum. All right. Uh, let's bring the counter cam back in. All right. Got to roll this thing around in a little bit more flour so that it is a little bit more manageable. All right. Come on. Come on, I just want to turn you into a nice, big, delicious, doughy snake. Nothing more, nothing less. Let's see how we're doing. tough. I'm going to do my best. Okay. There we go. There we go. Now that is a snake if I've ever seen one. Now here's the one little itty bitty issue. We got to really make sure that we sell to our audience that this is a snake we're dealing with. And this snake right here doesn't look very snake-like. So I'm gonna grab the scissors. I'm gonna try to see what I can do with regards to its face. I wanna see if I can make myself a nice, big-ass snake chomper. Now my only question is, how do I make sure that the chomper stays open while this thing roasts in the oven? Because I wanna make sure that people understand that this is a big, kind of gaping snake mouth. I'm thinking maybe what I can do is I can kind of like put its tail in there so it looks like the Ouroboros or Ouroboros, whatever it's called. All right, now I'm just gonna go down low a little bit over here just so that I can adjust the side of the snake creation. This is not going to look perfect. It's not going to be absolutely pretty, but it's going to it's going to get the job done. Fans of kind of funny will gaze upon this culinary creation on social media and will understand, "Oh, okay. It's a snake." And won't be confused at all. Hmm. I'm wondering though, if there might be like another way to do this, like maybe if I can stick something else in its mouth other than the tail, because I feel like the tail might 
The tail kind of might fuse with the head if I'm not careful. Hmm. Hmm. You know what? I'm gonna, I'm actually gonna keep, here we go. I'm gonna keep the head separated from the tail. In fact, you know what I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna make it so that the head of this thing is actually sticking out of the pizza like this. So it looks like the snake is like in the process of uncoiling, in the process of no longer being in a uh, round circular shape and, you know, off to explore the environment around it. There we go, perfect. See, you just need to apply a little bit of brain power and you can solve any issue that so happens to uh, come your way. Of course, you know, after this pizza, we can kind of adapt for the next pizza if this doesn't actually turn out as well as it should. Uh, let's see, I'm just gonna cut a little bit of dough up here. Uh, is this green food coloring or is it pesto? It's actually spinach. Uh, I actually mixed uh, spinach leaves and water uh, into the dough to give it the kind of distinctive green coloration that you see on camera at the moment. All right, uh, and finally, we wanna make sure that this thing is identifiably a snake. So I'm gonna be uh, grabbing a couple of olives out of here and we will be shoving those into its eyes so people understand oh it's a snake ah oh, fuck one of the olives fell on the floor yeah it was um i wasn't certain how the <clears throat> effect would turn out but i thought it turned out pretty well pretty well Okay, this is gonna be a bit more of a cartoony looking set of snake eyes than I originally anticipated it looking, but that's okay. Um, hold on a second, that, that particular piece of olive didn't really work out. Let me grab something else. Here we go, perfect. Oh, I found the perfect one that it escaped. Uh, come on. There we go. Now, of course, the dough might grow around the eyes and it might, you know, obscure the pieces of olives a little bit, but, you know, that's something that we'll deal with later, obviously. Now, I'm going to just try and tuck the underside of the crust in a little bit. I'm also going to spread out the interior so that we don't have too much of a crust underneath. There we go. All right, without further ado, uh, let's go ahead and let's spread some of our tomato sauce on. Actually, you know what, before we do that, let's actually um, get our cheese out. I realize that I've not actually brought our cheese out and I figure that we should probably do that so that the moment that we add our, um, the moment that we add our tomato sauce to the, uh, pizza, we'll immediately be able to add our cheese after that. Give me just a quick little second. Here we go. Uh, this uh, is mozzarella fresca. It's uh, fresh mozzarella cheese uh, in the same sort of packaging that typically you would have bocconcini inside of. Uh, we're going to go ahead and we're going to open this bad boy up. Oh, huh. That's interesting. It seems like somebody already began to dig into this stuff. This is unanticipated and actually a little bit concerning. Let's see. Okay, we still got ourselves a nice big uh, ball of mozzarella fresca, albeit it's not as big as I previously thought it would be. Uh, probably should have, I should have spoken with the rest of the family in advance not to use this thing. Okay. Uh, 
here was what we gotta do. We gotta cut this thing in half to make sure that we are using half and half on both pizzas. Uh, now here's the idea. To really make this an identifiably uh, kind of funny dish, I figured that it would be fun if we were to uh, make it so that the pieces of cheese that are gonna go on the pizza uh, would be in the shape of the kind of funny logo, as we can see over here. Um, and I thought it would be even more fun if we were to put little pieces of olives on top of the little pieces of cheese to make them look like eyeballs which of course is the number one thing that these snakes tend to go for whenever they're hunting down or killing the kind of funny crew. So that's where we're currently at. I'm trying to think what will be the best way to do this. Like I wanna make a, like a bunch of like, maybe like circular pieces of cheese. And so if I just maybe like trim down the sides of this log of cheese that I'm working with over here, I can maybe make something like circular and log-like that I can kind of work with over the course of the next few minutes. Uh, oven is currently at 389 degrees, so it still has a little way to go. So we're not pressed for time really. All right, I think this is about as good as we can go. So all the little pieces that I'm cutting, I'm gonna put over here and I can, you know, provide additional little cuts on them here and there to make them more uh, circular. These pieces of cheese will also like, they will definitely melt a little bit in the oven for sure. Uh, and obviously that will uh, make them become a little bit more circular like in the process. So a little further, further drive home exactly what I'm aiming for, but Hmm. I'm realizing right now that I might not have a whole lot of pieces of cheese to kind of work with. Right. I'm just gonna make as many pieces as I possibly can. There we go. Oh. Currently 6.04, by the way, which means that I've been streaming for two hours. I suspect we got maybe one more hour in us. Okay. This is not a lot of pieces of cheese to work with. So you know what I'm thinking is, what if instead of uh, like making the entirety of the kind of funny circle, uh, I use it to just make the eyes and the like little smiley face on the kind of funny logo. I think that would probably work out best. Unless another thing I could also do is I could also like cut these pieces of cheese in half to make even smaller pieces. Hmm. Let's just, I'm just gonna grab these things over here and see. See, the problem is, is that if I just do the smiley face like that, like it doesn't look very impressive just because of how like <laughs> how few pieces of cheese it is on the kind of funny smiley. If I kind of try to spread it out like that, that, that begins to look a lot more impressive. Yeah, you know what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna cut some of these in half. I think that once cut in half, it will provide me with more real estate to work with. Okay. Now this means I'm gonna have to do a little bit more sculpting with my pieces of cheese, but I hope that you'll understand. Hmm. What I'm thinking now though, is that now that I'm actually beginning to kind of like cut up these pieces so that they're super small, I don't think it actually makes much sense anymore to put olives on them. So I think I'm gonna do without the olives in the end, which is okay. Cause ultimately I'm not exactly the biggest fan of olives to begin with. All right. All 
Uh, let's see, the oven is currently at 431 degrees. So the idea is that once it rises to about 500, it'll be good uh, if our pizza will be ready to go. That's the current plan. Actually, I'm cutting up a lot of little pieces of scraps. I'll definitely be able to put some of those little scraps kind of along the edges, uh, the edge, like the contour of the pizza. I think that, uh, and I'll be able to use it to like fill in little gaps here and there. That'll, that'll work. Actually, for the, for the second time around, when I do the second pizza, I won't like make them into small little pieces like this. I'll just make them into strips that I can put around the thing. Oh, wait a minute. Hold on a second. I just forgot something. You know what I also have on hand? You'll live. Ah, very funny. I have mozzarella string cheese. I had completely forgotten about this stuff. Originally, I was thinking of maybe inserting this into some of the snakes I was gonna be using, but then that kind of completely slipped my mind. Uh, I can put this around the kind of contour of the pizza as well. I mean, at least that's my thinking, but obviously we'll have to bend it and see. Oh, okay, okay. I'm thinking, you know what? If I cut these mozzarella string cheese pizzas in half, like such, that'll make them a little bit more workable. There we go. And there we go. There we go. I think that'll work out for the best. Okay. Let me just push the mozzarella over here and I'm just going to use this side of the cutting board to cut a whole bunch more of these pieces of mozzarella. Uh, don't worry, by the way, there will definitely be more opportunities in the future for us to work with olives. Definitely is not the last that you've seen of these little itty bitty green boys on the channel. Uh, there we go. There we go. Uh, let's see. I'm going to go ahead. I'm going to cut up three more of these guys. I can always cut up more later on if I feel like I need to. All right. Peel here. They got to make these things easier to peel open sometime. There we go. Let's see, oven is at 470 and fast approaching. All right, without further ado, let's go ahead and let's start by adding our pizza sauce. Let me just grab a quick little... Mmm, this is good. This is good stuff. I'm gonna put two big spoonfuls of this stuff. I'm gonna do my best to spread it around without getting any on the snake, because the idea is that the snake is keeping uh, the pizza sauce in. Let me just... There we go. 
push it down on this spoon. There we go. That's a real nice coating of pizza sauce in there. Uh, and finally, uh, let's go ahead and let's recreate the kind of funny logo. Thanks to everybody, by the way, that stuck through me through all this. I had, um, every now and then on my streams, you know, I have to kind of reassess my plans and come up with some new way that I'm gonna tackle an obstacle that I knew was gonna be difficult, but I didn't anticipate to kind of give me pause like this. I knew that the process of like putting the cheese and toppings on these kind of funny pizzas was going to be a little bit complicated. Uh, I didn't really expect though that they would kind of force me to kind of completely rethink my strategy, but I'm glad that you stuck with me and I'm happy uh, at the prospect of knowing that the resulting pizza is probably going to be, well, just move these two little guys over there. Now the idea is that maybe I can yeah, I can probably definitely uh, position one of these pieces of cheese like such. Hmm. But I think I might need to cut it in half by a little bit. No, these, I need to get myself another half. Give me a second. Let's see. Okay. There we go. Now, the only thing is that, I mean, I feel like I kind of nailed the shape, but I feel like it might not stick in place exactly like that for too long, which I feel is a bit of a unfortunate little mishap. Um, hmm. Do I want to do anything to kind of like keep it in place? Oh, I have an idea. I have an idea. Uh, give me a little second. Just gonna, just very, gently cut a bunch of tiny little holes into the side of the thing. There we go. So that it will more easily remain in that shape like that. There we go. That's good looking. That is good looking. Mm. All right. Currently it is uh, 505 degrees. I think it should rise to like 550. Dean, I want to say. Either way, we're pretty much almost there. I'm going to go ahead. I'm going to let me just put the caps back on these olive things and move them out of the way. I think I have the wrong caps. On. There we go. There we go. some more things out of the way. All right, I think our oven is more or less where we need it to be. So let me just cut around a bit of the parchment paper here. The idea is, uh, like last time, uh, we are going to be leaving the pizza in the oven for like two or so minutes so they can properly firm up. And then after it has properly firmed up, uh, we're going to remove the parchment paper from underneath it. And then after the parchment paper from underneath it has been uh, removed, we're gonna leave it in the oven for an additional eight or so minutes. I actually, I already have an idea of how maybe I can uh, do the second uh, round of Kind of Funny Pizza, but we'll have to wait a few minutes for that to happen. All right, without further ado. Uh, oh, let me just move the recipe image out and bring the, uh, oven cam in so we can get a better view of it going into the oven. Let's schlep this thing in. Oh, crap. I just realized one of the, um, the pizza stone, which I typically cook my pizzas on top of, 
is covered by a thing of a bob. I'm gonna have to move it out of the way. There we go. Okay. Now let's put it in for real. There we go. Uh. Whew. Echo, set a timer for three minutes. Three minutes, starting now. Okay. Right. An Amazon package was delivered today. Yes, I know. I know that an Amazon package was delivered today. All right, we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna start preparing our second pizza. Last pizza that we made, we used a lot of tomato sauce and not a lot of cheese. This pizza is gonna be inverted. We're gonna use a lot more cheese, not as much tomato sauce will be visible. That's the plan. Okay, uh, let's grab our parchment paper. And actually, you know what? Just to really kind of stretch this thing out, I'm just gonna apply a little bit of flour to our rolling uh, pin. And we're just gonna do a little bit of that. Just so that I'll have more real estate to work with after I shift it over to the parchment paper. Okay. Echo, how much time is left on the timer? You have 50 seconds left on your three minute timer. Fifty seconds left, perfect. trying to do my best to kind of make a nice round circular shape like before. It's a little bit tough. All right, I think that's about as good as we're gonna do. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna grab the ball of dough that we kept to the side earlier. Actually, you know what, hold on a second. Timer is about to go off on the oven. We're gonna remove our parchment paper. When we do, um, I am also gonna take the opportunity to uh, put that pizza dough over there in the freezer. Uh, Echo, turn off the timer. Okay. Uh, let's bring our oven in. Ooh, look at that. Wow, we are dealing with a real snake-ass pizza tonight. Echo, set a timer for six minutes. Six minutes? Seven Normally minutes. I would set it for like eight minutes after this, but I wanna just be careful. Okay. Uh, right, I said that I would package this thing. So let's go ahead and let's do that now.
Uh, you know what? I'm going to use one of the bigger Ziploc bags. Ah, damn it. Why does the Ziploc bag have to be just out of reach? Uh, damn it. Uh, please don't have anything fall on my head. There we go. You want to use one of the bigger Ziploc bags because it will expand ever so slightly in the fridge or freezer and that will only create issues for you. I'll be sure to add a date to the Ziploc bag later on so I'll know for future reference how long this thing has been in the fridge for. There we go. All right. Let's continue to expand out this big snaky boy. gonna let gravity do its toll here to really make our snake all big and long. All right, I'm just gonna check up on the pizza real quick. Okay, looking good. Now we're gonna complete our second snake pizza. Oh, damn it, it's not quite long enough. It's not quite there. All right, there we go. I had to stretch it out a little bit more, but I think that we got the basic shape down pat. I think the, the steak head on this guy is gonna look quite nice. Quite nice. The only thing is that we don't have quite as much stuff on this section of the edge over here to kind of keep the pizza sauce in. But if I build it up a little bit like that, if I do a little bit of terraforming, I can resolve that issue. Same thing with this section of the snake over here, which looks a little bit on the smaller side. All right, looking good. Okay, uh, with that dealt with, let's grab our olives from earlier. Put these in the snakey's eyes. Uh, I should use another knife or another fork, actually. I should use a fork. Here we go. This is the knife I was using previously. It's I number one, and that is I number two, will they remain after they come out of the oven? We'll have to wait and find out. Well, it seems like the eyes are still remaining on that boy, so that's good. Uh, okay, this time around for this boy, I'm actually gonna just put exclusively uh, this type of cheese. I think I'm gonna leave the uh, string cheese over to the side. So let me just take a quick second to cut up as many of these pieces as I can. Best if we can kind of use up the good mozzarella first, you know. All right. 
right. And what I'm thinking is that I can either use like a bunch of olives or maybe like a bunch of, maybe like a couple of pieces of additional green dough to kind of like formulate the, like the little lip shape and the eyes on the kind of funny pizza after all is said and done. Okay. Oh, I think that our timer is about to go off. This is exciting. All right. Echo, turn off the timer. Let's see how this bad boy came out. Ooh, I think that six, uh, six minutes was exactly right. Wow, look at this, look at this beauty. Hold on, let me just position it a little bit better. Lo and behold, logo got a little bit messed up in the process, but I mean, that's kind of to be expected. But the pizza, oh boy, this is, this is quite the, holy shit. I'm gonna go ahead and I'm just gonna take some pictures of this bad boy real quick before I forget to do so. Just so that I'll have some stuff to share on social media after the stream for today is done and over with. There we go. It's um, unfortunately, I don't know like to what extent um, people that are outside of the kind of funny community are gonna be able to immediately look at this pizza creation and say, oh yeah, that's identifiably obviously uh, the kind of funny logo, but oh well my best. Uh, okay, we're gonna leave that to cool for a little bit. Actually, you know what we can do uh, is we can turn on the oven drawer uh, down below uh, and we can use that to keep the pizza warm for the next little bit. Let's go ahead and let's do that. Give me just a quick second. I'll definitely try it on stream though, that's for sure. Okay, uh, it's in place. Let's go ahead and let's add our tomato sauce. There we go. Three-ish big spoonfuls. Sorry, I don't know that. I was not talking to you. You do realize that, right? Just trying to make sure that the pizza sauce is nicely dispersed over the pizza in question. There's none in too much of one part of it. All right, without further ado, let's go ahead. And we really want to make sure this time around that we're kind of properly covering up this bad boy with cheese. We don't want any particular part to feel like it's lacking in cheese. So we've gonna, we're gonna have to make sure that we're nice and thorough. Oh, did Pretzel Rock stop playing? Or is it just, did it just switch over to like a really quiet track? No, I think it is still playing. I think it's just transitioning between tracks or something. Hold on a second. Some of these pieces of cheese are a little bit on the, they're a little bit on the thick side and I need to make sure that they're, properly thin. A 
Okay, it's gonna be a little bit close because I don't know that I have so much cheese left that I can kind of completely cover the sauce, but we'll see. We'll definitely cut up pieces that are a little bit too thick to make them a little bit thinner so that we can help spread them out a little bit more. And we'll manage by the end. go. There we go. Still not entirely certain what I'm gonna use to make the kind of funny eyes and the uh, little like mouth shape. Still TBD. Uh, let me cut this piece in half. And there we go. We just barely made it, but we managed to more or less cover all of it with cheese. Let me just wash my hands real quick here. Ah, looks pretty good. Uh, all right, now we just have to figure out the smiley face and the eyes. What are we going to do? What are we going to do? I mean, yeah, I guess we can just continue to use more olives. I think that'll probably be for the best. Uh, let's bring in the uh, logo once again, just for reference. Okay. Just gonna bring out a whole bunch of olives all at once to make my life easier. There we go. Okay. These olives are like in uh, like, they're like little cylindrical shapes. So I'm just gonna cut these cylinders in half just so that they'll be a little bit more easier to kind of manage and fashion into the shapes that we want. Okay, there we go. That's, it's not quite, it's just not, doesn't quite look as good as it could look though. That's the thing. You know what? I'm gonna go back to my original idea of using uh, little pieces of green dough. I think that will make the most sense. And you know what? Because uh, there are a couple of sections of snake here that would probably have a little bit too much dough, I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna cut it off from the beast itself. I think this will probably work out for the best.
There we go. Gotta say though, these olives are pretty tasty. I was not anticipating them to taste as good as they do. Uh, let me just, I need to cut off a little bit more green stuff. There we go. Of course, the eyes and the, you know, little smiley thing look a little bit small right now, but of course the dough will grow in the oven and that will definitely resolve that issue. There we go. I think that's about good enough looking. Unfortunately, it's a little bit hard to see on camera, but from my perspective, it looks pretty, pretty good. Hold on a sec. This, this little dough eyeball has maybe a little bit too much dough on it. Let me just, there we go. Make it a little bit smaller so that we don't have two dough eyeballs that are like disproportionately small, small and large. Okay, I think that's about good enough. I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna put this bad boy in the oven. Oh, after I put this bad boy in the oven, I am going to once again, consult the prize wheel of causality and finish up those two remaining wheel spins uh, that I previously promised. Uh, where is the, here we go. We're again cutting up the parchment paper so that we're not putting in too much of this stuff all at once in the oven. There we go. Looking pretty good. All right, without further ado, let's schlep this bad boy in. Uh, let's switch over so that we can show off, off our stove. Echo, set a timer for three minutes. Three minutes, starting now. Whew. All right. Let's spin the wheel. One, two, and three. Oh, hot sauce shot. This is where we take a shot of hot sauce. Uh, once again, it's going to be uh, Cholula uh, sweet habanero hot sauce. The sweet part of it makes it sound like it wouldn't be that painful, but trust me when I say that this stuff can get pretty, pretty painful. Ugh. Definitely a weird way to end this stream, that's for sure. Ah, there we go. Okay, I think that's about sufficient for a shot. Just to give you an interior look at what we're dealing with. All right. Down the hatch. Ooh. <laughs> like I said earlier, you think from the name Sweet habanero, that it wouldn't be that bad, but ugh, 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 ugh. For future reference, I need to put a limit on how many times I'm doing that per stream, because I can't do this that many times. Whoa. Okay. Um, in a few minutes, we're gonna need to take our pizza, um, not the pizza, but the parchment paper under the pizza out of the oven. Let me just take a moment to clean up a little bit. Uh, and then after I take the parchment paper out from under the pizza, I will do the final wheel spin. Thank you once again to everybody for your patience. I really appreciate it. And by the way, by cleanup, I just mean shovel the food 
Now that's on the cutting board into my mouth because I don't want it to go to waste. Mmm. Good stuff. Okay. It turns out we didn't have any use for the green olives, so I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna put that stuff back in the fridge. Uh, we might need to use this stuff later on for the other uh, batch of green pizza dough, so I'm gonna leave it over there. Don't need to use the pepper anymore, so I'm gonna go ahead and put it back over there. Um, mozzarella cheese sticks, don't need them, so I'm just gonna package the rest of these bad boys up. All these packages that we opened are gonna go into the garbage. Echo, turn off the timer. We just put this in the fridge real quick and we will deal with our parchment paper. All right, uh, here we go. Ooh, this one's coming out real nice. Real nice. Uh, fuck. The center of the pizza is a little bit on the, how should I say, watery side. I don't want the water to randomly burst in the middle of the oven. There we go. Hoping that the water will evaporate over the course of the next little bit. Okay. Echo, set a timer for six minutes. Six minutes, starting now. So hopefully over the course of the next six minutes or so, uh, that will kind of evaporate sufficiently enough that it won't be an issue. I wonder, is it because of like the cheese? Is, does the cheese have like too much moisture on it? Or is it because of the tomato sauce? Because I've never really seen that happen before. Uh, let's go ahead and let's spin the prize wheel of causality. Mm. All right, one, two, and three. Animals are dumb. All right, that means that for two minutes, I have to tell you why a random animal out there in Mother Nature is dumb. Uh, before I do that, though, uh, I'm just going to briefly uh, take the pizza that is currently uh, inside the oven warmer down below out, just so that we can let it cool down slightly so that we can taste it. There we go. All right. <sighs> Echo, name a random animal. Here is an animal, an Olympic marmot. An Olympic marmot. Ooh. All right. Echo, set a timer for two minutes. Second timer. Two minutes, starting now. Ladies and gentlemen, I want to talk to you for a few minutes about the Olympic marmot. Now here's the thing, you hear marmot and you think, oh, some like little weird badgery rodenty kind of thing. And then you hear Olympic and you think, oh shit, this is not just your average marmot, this is an Olympic marmot. This is a marmot that's going places. This is a marmot that's gonna, nope, 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 nope. Please dispel all thoughts because we are not talking about some amazing freak of nature that manages to defy the marmot name. We're just talking about a regular old marmot that just so happens to have Olympic tack on its name. I truly have no knowledge of the etymology of how this particular unusual animal came to be. I'd like to imagine that perhaps it was within the vicinity of some large Greek mountain and they figured, oh, let's just call it the Olympic marmot because it's in the vicinity of what you would imagine people thought to be Mount Olympus back in the day. 
I'm here to tell you though that regardless of its origins, the Olympic marmot is just a whole bunch of ass. I mean, you ever looked at a rat and thought, man, that thing is just a whole bunch of ass and that thing doesn't even have like a particularly large ass because it's a like small little rat? That's this animal, the Olympic marmot, times like 500. Why 500? I don't know. Thousands a large number, 500's about half of that. And that's the thing. I'm not even gonna say that this is a thousand times ass because I feel like in a way that would be like indirectly complimenting it. I don't wanna even do that. You're 500 times ass and no more and no less. That's how assy the Olympic marmot is. Uh, it seems like we're not quite at two minutes. What else can I say? I mean, that's the thing. There's really not a whole lot else to say about the Olympic marmot. It's just a sad, shitty little ratty animal that inhabits probably the foothills of some Greek mountain. It doesn't even live in the mountain. It just lives at the base of it. That's why the Olympic marmot really sucks. All right. Echo, turn off the timer. Okay, uh, with that taken care of, let's see, is this plate hot? It's a little bit hot, okay. Uh, let's go ahead uh, and let's talk a little bit about the first pizza we made. Now this pizza that we're gonna cut into right here and right now uh, probably won't be as tasty as the pizza that's currently in the oven because that pizza has a lot more cheese on it. Uh, but I still suspect that it's dough, probably be pretty tasty. Uh, let's go ahead. Let's use our pizza cutter to its maximum potential. Cut ourselves a nice, thick slice. All right. Hmm, look at this bad boy. I really love the kind of texture of the like green crust on the side of it. Looks really nice. Hmm. The actual texture of the taste though is kind of a different story. I don't know if it's like maybe just a weird placebo or whatever, but like the, the addition of the spinach, it's definitely changed the texture of this thing a little bit. It definitely has like an unmistakably like chewiness to it that I feel like the pizzas of the past I made didn't have. And now definitely part of that is the fact that like we're dealing with a super massive ultra big crust. There's just something about it that's different. But here's the thing, it's not bad. It's actually pretty decent. I know that I just had some of this hot sauce earlier, but you know what, I'm gonna go ahead, I'm gonna sprinkle just a little bit of the hot sauce on this thing. Oh, hold on a sec. Hmm. I don't know if the hot sauce complimented it, but still, not bad. Echo, turn off the timer. All right, uh, let's see here, let's see here. There we go. Let's bring our final pizza out to pasture. Ooh. This thing looks nice. Yeah, let's get a nice good look at this thing with the counter cam. There we go. It's a little bit, the, the greenness of the dough definitely blends in with the cheese a lot more, but I'm definitely looking forward to digging into this one because you know that that cheese is gonna be good. And I'm kind of amazed that the olive stayed on the eyes of both snakes. All right, I'm gonna go ahead, I'm gonna put this down on this serving plate over here. We're gonna let that thing cool off just enough that I can take pictures of it without fear of getting burned. And of course, bite into it without fear of getting even more burned in the mouth. Uh, before that happens though, let's close out the show. Oops, give me just a minute here. Thank you to everybody for tuning in to this installment of Cozy Bears Cooking. If you enjoyed today's show, be sure to subscribe to me here on Twitch and follow me on Twitter, Instagram, and TikTok at Alex Kozina. That's at A-L-E-X-K-O-Z-I-N-A.
I'll be back here next Sunday at 4 p.m. EST with another scrumptious dish. But until then, I'm Alexander Kazina, and I want you to keep on cooking. Well, that was supposed to cue the outro, but it seems like it didn't work. Uh, oh, that's right. Sorry, I forgot that <laughs> we have to hit a button on the stream deck to cue for the outro. This is real awkward. Kitman, uh, thank you so, so, so much for hanging out with me. Thank you to Silos. Thank you to everybody else who subscribed and tuned in today. Y'all are great people. Till next time.